Hi, this is Susan Blue Robot from SusanBlueRobot.com. I'm here today with a promised video of how I buy my books. First off, let me say that this has all just been trial and error. I've done, this is my ninth book that I've done and I didn't find any information on how to find a pop-up book on the internet so I had to do trial and error. Now, unlike normal binding books, because a pop-up opens and shuts fully 180 and needs the movement, you can't just bind the book solid, um, butting up the binding button, butting up against the other one. Now, what I use is I use um, photo cord core board, which is the the uh, matting they use for around photos. I happen to come across a whole heap of this. And there's two ways of doing it. You can use organza ribbon um, because you need something with the strength, but you need it to be very, very fine. And you need a very, very fine um adhesive not glue adhesive so i use my siron now on a permanent and because the um organza ribbon fits perfectly in the siron to go down now you need a bit of the organza ribbon so if you're going to make a lot like me i'm going to use Tyvek, Tyvek sticky tape, Tyvek tape. So it's sticky on one side, and because it's, um, it, you can't tear it or anything. So the idea is we need something on the strength of the binding where there is no board so it doesn't tear. And I'll show you that. So I'll be using this tape, but you can make the equivalent of this with the organza ribbon and a very fine um, adhesive. So I use the Siron. You can use double sided tape, but you've got to make sure it's very archival and that it's not too thick. So I just put that in there and make my tape that way. But I won't be doing that because I spent the extra money and I brought the proper tape. So when you have your book ready, pop-up book ready for binding, here it is here, and you go, okay, so this is the binded area. You only glue each page from the outer edge to an inch before your folded end don't don't glue right up to the very end because the mechanisms don't work very good in the books uh, my first I think it was the ABC book I glued from here right to the very edge as well as I didn't leave the um, space between the binding and the outside book so it's very hard to open I don't even let anybody handle it I show them only because I haven't gone back to fix it so the next thing is to do is you glue all your pages in this case I've got five so it's about an inch thick don't go very much more than about two inches thick so if I just hold these, this book normally, that's one inch. So we need that measurement. So our, our core, our um, binded edge of the book is going to be one inch. So now what you do is you measure your book. In this case, my, my book itself is five and a quarter, just over five and a quarter. So I'm going to cut my board five and three quarters that's enough overhang at both top and bottom 
um, for the book to protect the pages. Then the thing is you don't measure all the way to the edge. Now this book is five and a quarter this way. So what you do is you add on a quarter and take off a half. The reason being is we need the we need the binding of the book because this isn't this is an inch at the end. You need a half an inch in here for the mechanism of your book. So that means you want to cut your um, scoreboard. It's five and three quarters that way, and you're going to be cutting it five inches this way. So then what I end up with is I want two that are five inches this way and five and three quarters this way. And I want a one inch strip that is five and three quarters in length this way, but one inch this way, because we have the inch at the end of our book here. So what we have now, if we just lay this book aside, because we need the room, now what we have here, and I also want to grab a just over a half inch ruler. The reason being is because that's how much either side of this spine book that we want, just over the half and half an inch. Because this is an inch and we want the books to fold back in so they nearly meet in the middle. So it works on your spine of your book. Most things work on the spine of the book. You want to be halfway between there. It's the distance that you have your pieces away from each other. So you will have the front of the book, the spine of the book, which is that half an, half an inch or just over, and then you'll be having this one a half an inch that way. Now, this has all been from trial and error. I have come at this. Using this is the ideal thing. So, I'm using a A3 sheet of cardstock, uh, not cardstock, paper. It's just a bit heavier weight than paper. I think it's 100 GSM. You can look that up on the net to get the conversion for that. Now what I do is I glue my first bit in and I want about an inch, inch and a half um, fold over to cover my book. So this is just like covering a, a normal um, book except we've got to have the spine certain distance and things. So what I'm going to do is put that in place so I'm about an inch and a half from the edge and I'm about an inch and a half from this edge I'm not going to measure it because that's it's all going to be folded in and you're not going to see that so I'm going to push that down all around making sure that the glue takes then I'm going to take my ruler And I'm going to lay my ruler up against that flush. And I've also got it up against this flush. So I know when I put this on, if I have this spine flush against the ruler here and flush against there, I know that's the right distance apart. So just make sure that that is 
selected. And I add the glue to that. Then I put it flush up against the ruler and line it up with the bottom of the ruler here. Now I put that down. I just move the ruler. If I get glue on it, I just wipe the glue away. I'm not one to worry about if my rulers or any implement get sturdy. I'll just go and wash it. So we push that down. We do the same on this side. We put the ruler up flush against the matting board. And we add the glue to this side. Probably not that much glue. I still haven't gone into town to buy new glue yet. I'm generous with the glue. Right, then you lay that in place, push it down all around. So then what I have is my three pieces with the right gap here, here. You can turn it over and give it a turning it over you can also get the start of the crease line okay so when I turn it back I now want to trim away my excess cardstock you can use a guillotine for this, cut it perfectly, but really you're not going to see it because it's going to be hidden by your book. And this side, um, we get rid of them. So now we have our book. What I'm going to do is train your book over, crease it that way, open it up, crease it this way, open it back up, crease it this way and I just go up that spine of the book and open it up and crease it the last way. Now, this is where the tape comes into its own. Now, if I was to make just make this book up with the strength of the opening and shutting of your book, this is so weak a cardstock that it gets tears in it here and here. And in time, um, it does get a bit wrecked. So the idea is this is your main part of your card here. The, sp the spine here is where you need the strength. So and you go, oh, I'm using a lot of tape, but I don't want to spend all the time making the book just to find that it falls apart in a couple of years time for use and I don't make the books not to look at them because I look at them all the time so I go about two inches out this way and two inches about that way and I cut this is just thing so you'd be doing if you're just doing it with the organza ribbon you'll just be doing it cutting it this size 
what you need is enough you can continue to cut the pieces enough to fit across your work area and I think by rights I think I need five or six I'm not sure no, I need six for mine and as I said I'm going to make the book I want it to last forever and ever especially if kid if you get making them for children you want them to last so you want to make sure that you've got the strength in this part that will tear from opening and shutting and then okay this is what I've learnt I've now taken the backing of my either organza ribbon or in this case my tape I put it at the very end holding the two holding the two sides up just put it to that inch binding then you take it down still holding it up in the air you follow you follow this groove so what you're doing is you're going across here not just straight across you're following it down into the groove here flat across on the flatness of the car of the paper and then up and out you don't just go straight across there because then this all looks very untidy so what I do is I put that down holding it up in the air I go across tape it into the shape it's going down up down up down and across here so it goes two inches either side and I do the same all the way along now um, I got this tape from a place in England over eBay um, I'm sure I did see and as you're putting these down you concentrate holding the other one up so it doesn't fall making sure you're going up and down in the gutter of your book and across and no matter what I tried to do with this tape I couldn't tear it so it's wonderful stuff right so now I will just continue to put these in place across here and it's very very thin it's even thinner than the organza ribbon which I made for four books using the organza ribbon one book using nothing and sadly that book is looking a bit worse for wear not only did I not have the spine right I didn't uh, reinforce the spine of my book so this is all my lessons that you're benefiting from but I wish somebody had have told me what not to do in the first place because I treasure my pop-up books big time whether they be how to make pop-up books kids pop-up books even from thrift shops everywhere I go I hunt for pop-up books now what I've done oh also people will go can we use glue okay I tried glue on the spine of the book it did weaken even with the organza ribbon it did weaken 
the edge of the book, the loose part of the book, heaps. Even though I glued in organza ribbon, it uh, still just didn't do it. Now, last one is when I get bored and I want to go quickly, but you don't hold it up in the air. Once this once this tape's on, it's on for ever. It didn't want to come off. Okay, so now I hope you can see that that it goes down, up, down, up, down. I want to move some of them out the way so they're thing. Now what I do is I go around and cover my book. So on the corners, I find the the angle of the corners. I add my glue. Um, what I do wish is that I had gone in and got glue now. New glue. Because this was a new glue, but it's not working as good as I hoped. So you go along around all four all four corners and do the gluing in of this part and I just use my fingernail to shape the groove in here that just um, embosses it and stretches it a little bit so it fits snug in there. As I said, I'm generous with my glue because I don't want it to come undone in years to come. Right. And we go. Got glue on my hands now. Okay. Two more corners. And we go one more corner. I was going to just edit and say, oh, you do it to this point, you do it to that point. But if you want to fast forward, you can. But it just gives you the option to li listen to me and tell you bits and pieces of what not to do. People have also said, can't I just use book binding? Uh, well, book binding is a plastic, so you'll be sticking the front of your book, the, the um, vinyl covering, I mean. You'll be sticking your book in there to plastic, and it doesn't stick very well. Um, so you've got to look at it if you go, oh, I just want to make a quick book that will fall apart as soon as the person opens it. Or I want to spend the time making a masterpiece and something that can be treasured forever and a day. Now, I'm not worrying if I get glue there because it's all going to be covered by the book that we're going to put in here. Now bear in mind you can email me at any time if you have any questions about what I'm doing. Um, I've got lots of videos on the blog. And all my pop-up books have been done using Make the Cuts Pop-Up Card Studio plus Make the Cut. Some of them have also been using, as well as this one, um, 
uh, scrap factory, the dolls, and the builder robot. The builder robots by me. Um, you need scrap factory to be able to use the builder robot, but it is fun. Um, now, when you're putting these ones in, when you're gluing here, you hold this in, stretch the stretch the cardboard so it goes in the in the grooves, and you stick it down all the way along. And you don't rush. Like really, I would sit here and normally hold this for one to two minutes making sure pushing it down all the way around just before I put the glue on I just want to bend up this again this is what I mean about I'd sit there and hold it until it takes okay Put the glue on the last one. Um, also, what I mean about making sure if you're going to use the organza ribbon to make sure if you're using just double sided sticky tape that it is going to last forever and a day. Um, because I have seen, because I've been crafting for well over 30 years now and some of my earlier projects from card making, if only 17 years ago, um, when we packed to move here, I found that the tape had all turned yellow. Now what I'm doing now is I'm bending it the book up at the spine of that book and I'm making sure it's creasing really well at a 90 degree angle turn it around do the same with the other okay so now that's over there now we're going to use our hand and we're bending our book back at this spine. Now this is what puts the pressure on if you haven't made this stiffer with the tape it will tear because you're moving that you're making sure that it's all perfect. Now this one's in there pull it back and we're bending this back this way. So what these do now is they come in and there's a gap. See how there's a gap here? Without that gap, your book doesn't open and it bends the front covers, the, the f pages that are close to the card, the, the book. Okay, then you pick the favourite side of your covering and you grab your book and your book will be going in here so there's a quarter of an inch all the way around and it's only glued to here so what you'll be doing is you'll be putting your glue here from about a half an inch from the edge of oh, three quarters of an inch from that edge from the folded edge so you put a generous amount of glue and we then carefully bring this down. Um, I don't know if you can see on the film that we're now putting it a quarter of an inch 
on the three sides a quarter of an inch this way a quarter of an inch on this side and we lay it down then we pick the book up lift the pages up a bit and push it into place now here's where you hold it you don't continue over to doing the other side first you have to make sure this is all down securely and dry now okay that's secure and dry I I time lapse that so you could not sit there and watch glue dry because it's not much fun it's as bad as watching paint dry now we will we will now glue this side in we bring the book over I'll turn this over so just tweak it into place before I push it in to push it down to set and you use your hands get in and hold it shut hold it down in place make sure that it's in place and there you have your book right. right that's the front and then you have whatever you want to put on your decorate your book however you want I'm not doing much like I don't do much on the outsides of my cards I don't do much on the outsides of my books because the wow bit is on the inside but I did happen to do a print and cut of these three little people and these three little people but one of them needs her glasses on Now I have to say I do like the thing because these glasses are really really fine I don't know if you can see how fine these are but they're very fine and they cut beautifully so what I do is put a bit of glue down there use my tongs my, my um, tweezers and I just pat the glasses into that glue that I put on there and I put her glasses on her And there we have okay there we have our book finished binded there we have our book binded and if we open it up I've called this one my family And this is popped up. I embossed the clouds on the sky and I embossed the grass here. You open the next one. 
I did print and cut for my people. So added the things in. There's a idea of how to do the print and cut and get the lines to um, print as well. I did a video on that. It is. I'll leave a note as to what number video it is. And then we go this one. This one is the girl with their big glasses on. And her robot's on her shelf. She's got a robot in her hand. That is done with the Builder robot. And all the robots on the shelf are done with the Builder robot in Scrap Factory. Now, the thing is, the shelving, the shelves are um, done in, in Pop-Up Card Studio. I use the hinge method for the shelf. I made sure that it was far enough. It was half an inch out, but I had to make sure that there was a half an inch up plus the quarter of an inch to glue to the back of the card. I then put each of the robots on a little tiny tab separately and then glued them in. That what the tabs were not done in Pop-Up Card Studio, but I wanted the robots on the shelf. I embossed the base of the card. And I did the same here. I found images of Magic the Gathering and a Xbox, I think it is. I embossed the background and once again I did the cards, put them in his hand and his egg flip and spoon and then this one I did the clouds, cut them out. I put the little balloon, the L gas balloon on a cloud to hold it up higher and behind the other balloon and I put the little scrap factory people in I put the girl in here this is the second this is the balloon the second balloon I ever went up in this is the one and only balloon my son ever went up in um, his was tethered to the ground though because he was very young at the time he wasn't a chef at the time and this is the balloon that my husband went up in on another year so then if you haven't gathered that this is my son and this is me with my big glasses my robot in my hand plus my sh shelves of robots robots everywhere and this is my husband is his man on the moon flag because he likes the man on the moon no he likes of things space his computers so he's reading a book and it happens to be about computers and of course if you followed my blog you'll know he likes bikes so this is my family um, I hope this helped um, this has been Susan Blue Robot at SusanBlueRobot.com now bear in mind I'm not trained in bookbinding. Um, I know there might be bookbinders out there going, why did she do that? Why did she do that? This is from trial and error of how I do my books, and I've now done nine of them. Um, and luckily I didn't do a lesson back in the early earlier days because I would have had to remake one today. This has been Susan Blue Robot at SusanBlueRobot.com. I hope you enjoyed this video. And I'd love to see the books that you make. Be sure to share them. Bye for now.